hello on this beautiful day with blue sky up there and the sun shining down on us. It is truly springtime now. I'm Hans Dupke and I welcome you all to this year's Sakura Festivals. It should take place in just three weeks in late April when the Japanese cherry trees, the Sakura blossoms. Unfortunately, due to the corona circumstances, we cannot do that this year. I hope all of you are safe out there. But instead, as a replacement, we have a virtual Sakura Festival for you. And I'll be doing a small video for you on origami. I have performed origami and taught origami for many, many happy guests at the Sakura Festival for many years. It's always such a pleasure to be there and to experience all that. So, origami. Origami is a Japanese word meaning folding of paper, paper folding. And the most iconic origami model of them all is this crane here. The Japanese crane, the paper crane. The Japanese origami paper crane. An old model. We know them from woodcuts back, wood prints back to 1700. 34 um, and it is probably even older than that, centuries old, ancient Japanese origami. And it is folded this day also. Actually, if you fold 1000 of those and string them up. You not only get these beautiful decorations here, you also get to make a fish. How great is that? Going out there in the night time and say, look, see, a shooting star. Let's make a wish. That would be too simple. You have to work for it. A week or two, at least, to fold carefully these 1,000 frames, make them beautiful, and then, then you can make your wish. But origami is not only ancient, it is also modern, still being invented. This penguin, for instance, it is still here because winter is just now. We could have had snow today, luckily we don't, right? we have got the sun. But this one is designed by Japanese Shoko Aoyagi, a beautiful piece of origami. So simple in its shape, and 3D. This penguin is a token of modern origami art.
people are doing origami. And not just doing origami. Thousands and thousands of people are designing it. And one is really This speaker, for instance, flying and spreading its wings against the blue sky is one of my designs. It's so revolting to make an origami, to see the paper take shape, to feel the material to play with the colors. Here's the golden seagull. You don't see those often, do you? <coughs> and even an engine model can flap its wings when it flies around. So fun, so beautiful, so nice. I love it. And I would like to present a piece of origami for you. Designed by Japanese... No, sorry, of course not. We are in Copenhagen. This is Denmark. It is a Japanese event. So let's cross the two. Put them together, the Japanese origami and the Danish designers, and let's look at a designer called Anderson, an origami artist, not the well-known Hans Christian Anderson, not the fairy tales, but maybe a fairy tale in in origami. His name is Simon Anderson. Simon Anderson. Simon designed a lot of origami. But it's this seabird, a mandolin bird. Also a token of purity in origami with the clean lines and the contrast to use of paper here, just as we saw it with the penguin. Clean line, contrast of paper, just folded from one square with one color on one side and another color on the other side. by Simon, a hen, also pretty in its shape, sometimes you see the like minds of Japanese and Danish design having simple line, the 3D body, and the strong shapes with the contrast being use of the colors of the paper, and utilizing the material, how the paper will curve if you lock it in certain places, it will have cared for you. However, I will not show you one of these two birds. Instead, I'll show you a piece that connects back to the deep historical roots of the Japanese crane. A design by Simon 
Danish Simon and which I'll show you here. This time folded from Japanese washi paper. A luxurious version with a pattern. Like only the Japanese could do it. Uh, with golden prints along with the colors. And what I do is call it a parallel crane. It is much like the traditional crane. We start just like the traditional crane by folding one diagonal like that. and open up, rotate, and will strict, not strictly necessary, also the other diagonal. Open up, rotate, turn over, and fold down side to side in one direction. Open up, rotate, and fold down in the other direction as well. And now push these together. You can do that. It's trying to eat you, I think. Press it flat two flaps to each side to get a square, a new square, a smaller square. It's one quarter of the original square. So it has four layers all over. And now you have got to take this, these open edges here, just the top flap, and fold this into the center line, like that. Do the same thing in the other side, like that. Turn the model over. Do the same thing here, like that. You get this kite shape. It was a real kite today with the wind blowing around it. It could fly high on the sky, on the blue sky, actually. Really nice. Of course, you could also, since it's a sunny day, say, well, this is a vanilla ice cone and eat it. Tasty. Well, to continue with our parallel frozen train, we make a mark in between these corners that way and down the other way as well. To get a firm crease line, of course. Open up here and here, and take the topmost layer and open up to the crease line here. And push the raw edges into the center line while flattening the wing. Turn over and repeat here. Open these two flaps. Take the top layer, push upwards, open up here, up to the crease line here between two flaps. Push in 
draw edges and flatten the wing up here. You've got two wings and inside here you can see there is a bird trying to get out there. Trying to run up. Oh Patty, stay here. I finish you. done exactly like we would do with the traditional plane. But now we'll deviate. We take, instead of narrowing the head and the tail like that, we will make this corner go to the center like that and this line becomes parallel to the line and the same thing on the other side like that well still blowing Turn over the mud and do the same thing on this side. So these corners go to the center and we get these folded edges here parallel to the center line and to each other. We will still narrow the head. So we still take this edge down here and bring it to the center line by folding like that. But we see it still hits the parallel line here instead of going all the way up. And we turn over and do the same thing on this side. So we get something much like the uh, head and neck of the original frame. But well, we'll do the inside reverse though, which means inside. So we open up here so we can do it inside the model here. And this valley fold will reverse into a mountain fold by pulling the whole thing up. And you see while doing that this converts into a mountain fold. Valley fold and mountain fold. And all the way up to follow the this edge here. We'll do another inside reverse fold to make the head. We take the thumb into the probe of the train to a probe and take the other finger down on the back here. And with the other hand, we we'll grab around his neck and pull down while converting this mountain fold into a valley fold like that. <sighs> Good. So now it has got a visually strong head looking that way. And now for the tail. We'll break the with the position of symmetry here to make something asymmetric. That is, we'll make the tail differently from what we did with the neck. You see here from this corner down here, 
and up to the center here. There is a folded edge. We want to mark a crease along that. And we'll do that both ways, so also behind like that. And open up again. This is just free treason. We need that place. Because now we will make an inside position. Open up here, make an inside here, and reverse fold all of the sail up to vertical like that. So it goes up and the tip here points. This aligns with the point of the wing. And now we will inside reverse fold along the three trees line only. So you will get that. Where if you were to look inside the model here, you can see that this line goes all the way down to the center and aligns with the corners you had up here. This tail is high in the sky, higher up. We want to get it more down. So we take this side here, along its axis here, we fold it down like that. And then we do the same thing with the other one, the other flag up here, on the other side, on the back side in the middle. So that is the tail parallel folded train, parallel train. And for the final step, we want to open it up. So, between the wings, we take our thumbs on each side of the body here. And on the other side, we place all of our fingers around where the wing is attached to the body and then we pull it outwards and downwards you see how the body opens up to a bubble like that and gets a nice 3D shape and the wings are spread out so it can fly and so we have the two the original Japanese ancient crane here And the modern Danish crane over here. So now we can fly and play together. They are refreshingly different and yet much alike each other. Would you prefer the one connecting to the future or the one connecting to the deep 
historical and cultural metal taste, I believe. Of course, this is the one that allows you to fold a thousand cranes and make a wish. And with that, I wish you happiness and a good health for the rest of this year. Until we meet again, hopefully, at the Sakura Festival 2000.